This is the real honest way to making a small fortune selling vintage collectibles and niche items across the net. Hey, it's Don. Today we're going to get real and we're going to talk about the real honest way to make the most money you can on the internet selling vintage collectibles and niches. Now, I know a lot of people may not sell niches and collectibles, but in all honesty, you are totally missing out on so many opportunities selling in these areas. The biggest one is the constant repeat customers that you will get. It'll never be a one-off if you're specializing at least in a couple niches or something like that. Different collectible areas, whether it's records, trade cards, sports cards, any of those areas can can have some high value items that you can routinely run into. But the key to that is being able to understand that that's what they are when you see them. Many times I buy stuff after a ton of people have walked right by it and missed it. That's because they haven't spent the time, the effort to dig into those items because they assume there is no value. Now I've spent years and years digging into many of the items that we sell. I've collected as a child. I collected comic books, non-sports trade cards, action figures. I was heavy into Star Wars, including Star Wars curtains, wallpaper, and bed sheets in my room when I was a child. So I have been into these fields. I know what they look like. I can tell the difference. I've spent years. Even back when I was seven or eight, I was doing the same type of thing. I've always done something like this. When kids in my neighborhood needed a specific Star Wars card in 78, 79, I would swap them two of theirs for the one they needed. So I'd always gain. Sometimes, depending on the card, it might be three cards they'd have to give me for one of mine. And then I could swap them out throughout the neighborhood. It worked great. Everybody got what they wanted back in those days. My mom drug us along to garage sales and things like that as a child. She never a babysitter couldn't afford it so I went along wherever she went during the week when school was out now you don't have to have all that to be successful in this area anybody can become successful if they delve in and do the proper research now proper research in the area that I sell and takes a lot and it takes a lot of money time of yours as well this is just a small stack of around $1,400 worth of price guides, identification guides, guides in general that help you identify specific things. That is just for one niche, and that's missing probably another 10 books that I have that I routinely use as well. That's also not taking into account that I have probably around 30 or 40 sites that I also use for the military button and uniform sections of the items that we sell. I have to have that information. Even though I know a ton of the information in the books, the variety, the kinds, the, the things that may show up may be out of the ordinary. And without those books, you won't have a clue what it is. I constantly get people asking me, how do you know what to price things? Well, you can't price anything at all until you know fully 100% what you have. Not just what you have, but when was it made? That is a key factor in determining value on most anything. I can have a button, for example, that looks identical from 1970, made in 1976, that looks identical almost to the naked eye to a layperson in that field from one from the Civil War from 1860. They, they make them identical. The fronts are the same and things like that. But without a book or, or actual knowledge on them, you won't be able to distinguish them. You won't know if it's worth a dollar or a hundred bucks. That's the biggest aspect with records or any of these other things like that. You have to have some database of knowledge, whether it's up here or whether it's in a book or whether it's online. You have to understand how to use that database and how to use that knowledge to leverage that to get you the best money out of the items you are selling. Now, this is a reason why I do give out a lot of the information, even though I do take a lot of grief from people leaving comments on why I'm giving this information out for free in the first place. It's going to take you some work, some time, some investment, not only in money, but into your actual time, as I said, to understand and to be able to price categories effectively. And the amount of people that are willing to go that extra mile to specialize in something are very slim. There's not as many people that are willing to do that. Everybody seems to be looking for the quick and easy flip. That's fine and dandy. I've done those as well. But when you've got centered in niches and things like that, you pretty much can find out where to pick them up almost readily without having to randomly drive around and source and hope to find something. Anybody can drive around and find stuff that's worth money, NOS stock and vintage 
vintage ceramics and things just by looking up stuff on eBay, Terapeak, or wherever you may be looking it up at. But specialized niches like postage stamps and comic books, grading issues with all those, record issues with all those, labels, all those paper items and stuff that we do horrendously well on wouldn't be possible if I didn't have the basic knowledge and understanding of them. Again, that's why the other folks that I'm able to purchase these from don't understand and don't know the values on them because they haven't invested the time. They're stuck in their ways with what they currently sell or what they've sold for years of their life. So me being willing to learn something new or expand or go off my beat path to go into a different area is why I can do so well. I show a lot of different things on my channel. Many of the things that I sell and do good money on, you will never see. It's just the fact and nature of life. You can't share everything with everybody. There's a lot of ins and outs on most of the categories that I sell in. Knowing those ins and knowing those outs has always made us more money than most other people selling the exact same items. Again, dating and identifying is the key aspect for almost any collectible. And as I said, it's because many items look very similar, if not identical, to a lay person, someone who does doesn't know that industry, that field. So you will be fooled or think that it's worth something when it probably isn't. When you're first starting off, the majority of what you're going to find on an average, just random driving around, isn't going to be that rare. It will take you some time. Now we do sell a lot of scarce and quite a few rare items in, in my book. Now again, it's taken us years to get the knowledge to be able to pick those items to begin with. To be able to cherry pick another dealer or a mall or a flea market or any of that sort of thing. That's what it's going to take. Now you don't have to know everything in there. You don't have to have a huge stack of books for every category, but you've got to understand all the basics. Condition and grading on stuff that I sell is hugely important. Uh, spending the time to make sure you're showing it and marketing it correctly in a listing, whether it's on Etsy, eBay, Amazon, HIP, or any of the other platforms out there that I use, you've got to be able to understand all that aspect of it. Not only finding something that could be worth some money and knowing, hey, that it's worth some money, you've got to know what the best keywords are for that. What is a buyer going to be thinking about or wanting to search for based on what you have? And if you don't know the area, the, the niche, the collectible itself, that's going to be a struggle for a lot of people. As I said, I get posts and comments and questions every single day on how do you price this and, and stuff like that. It usually comes down to them not understanding what the item is or knowing what the item is at all in general. What is this? I see that a lot. Now, there's, again, nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with asking, posting photos of things here and there, trying to get an answer on what it is. But that comes down to why I make more money than most other people. I have taken the extra time to delve into things that I don't even sell yet, just so I know about them. I'll do random searches and things like that. I take out price guides, identification guides from the library whenever possible in areas that I don't sell in or areas that I know a little bit that I want to learn more. I expand my business. I expand my knowledge. That is the best number one way to get more money coming in, to make the big bucks, to make a small fortune selling things that most other people haven't a clue on. Now, one of the biggest drawbacks I hear from people is it will take you a lot of your time in researching. You'll have to spend time researching and understanding the specific categories or niches that you're in. I'd pick one and start with that one, delve into it enough to be dangerous out in the wild, and then I'd move on to some more. We constantly pick up new items and things like that whenever I can. But the bottom end is you've got to do the research on it. If you don't understand the item, you're not going to make the big bucks. Having niches as well has brought me a ton of merchandise, a ton of possibilities possibilities that I wasn't thinking of before. Now, for a lot of the niches that I, I sell, and I'm able to target source, basically meaning that I'm just going after those items. I don't have to randomly drive around anywhere. So when someone's spending a whole day going from garage sales, flea markets, thrift stores all day long, half the week, I'm not doing any of that. I'm spending a few hours out in the real world just going to one place or a couple places, picking up stuff, and then coming straight back. I'm not wandering around. I already know where I'm going, where I'm going to get the stuff that I have. So I'm not spending as much time sourcing as everybody else. I can afford to spend a little more time in research. Once you've done this for a length of time, it gets easier. You don't have to look up every item in a book. You don't have to look up names. You don't have to look up markings. You don't have to look up a lot of that. You'll see the common items over and over again when you delve into a niche. So when you're out there, you'll be able to tell instantly a $5 item versus a $200 item versus a $1,000 item. 
And that's honestly as well the way that tons of people that I talk to and converse with have been able to grow their business by investing, researching, and looking this stuff up and spending a lot of time on research versus going out there and randomly driving around. It's helped me in so many ways. People bring me stuff all the time because of my dedication to the items. I am able to buy things. I've got connections because I'm constantly asking for the same types of things from similar collectors or businesses. They know who I am. So collectors selling their inventory and things like that know who to talk to, know who pays the most money. I will pay more than most anybody else because I know more about them and can afford to do that. I know if they've got some good items or not. I'll offer a fair value. I do sell my items for a a lot more than many other people the very same item again because of these facts so that's the honest facts if you're just out there to make a quick buck and flip and don't want to spend any extra time into it at one point it's not going to be a viable business for you you have to have some solid foundation that constantly has the revenue coming in that you can constantly build on and build your knowledge to get better in those categories that is the way we've run. That is the way that's led us to where we're at right now. I wouldn't be here right now selling in the volume and selling the types of items for the money that I do if I hadn't spent some time researching and knowing what I'm doing. I'm in it for the long haul, so I'm not in it for the quick flip. I'm in it to make sure that I can expand my knowledge and my money. Who knows what's going to be out there in the wild on sourcing-wise. I can't guarantee anything in random sources, but when I do niches and things like that, I can pretty much guarantee I'm able to get it because I can tell what's what. I can tell the valuables from the not. But anyway, that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gave you some ideas, some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live, subscribe and tell all your friends. Seven gift set for every assignment. This one packs the full line, including 007 aftershave, hairdressing, and cologne. That's 007 for the license to kill women. When you use 007, be kind.